the legal services program was established at the law school, uh, by the law school, just because the politics of the state were so very conservative. And this is a program that was running against the tide. Uh, it was unpopular, the program was unpopular politically and otherwise with many, many people. North Mississippi Rural Legal Services uh, played significant roles in, I'd say, two or three major areas. Of course, uh, I, I think the first one is in litigation, the significant litigation that it was involved in uh, during, during, during that time, uh, especially the late 70s and, and, and into the 80s. Uh, that, that, that was a role that during that time they handled cases that uh, private attorneys were not handling. Um, uh, so uh, they filled that void. And I think the other, another big role that it played was that um, it provided uh, a place for, especially African-American lawyers, uh, once they got out of law school, uh, to have a place to go out and practice law, learn the correct way to practice law. I graduated in um, May of 1980. And so at that time, legal services was, as I said, considered a training ground for young black lawyers. Um, there were not as many opportunities to go into the legal field in different areas as there are now. Uh, so it was good to go to legal services to be around older lawyers who were doing significant litigation. The only black lawyer uh, that I ever saw was Alex Sanders. And you know Alex was, uh, worked with Legal Service, was one of the executive directors, and um, he started the Legal Service program uh, office here in Greenwood. Yeah, so Legal Services initially was connected pretty closely to community problems such as school integration, school desegregation, voter registration. Legal Services came in, it was on Johnson Street here with Applin, Chambers, and two or three more. And then Lou Myers was up at Oxford, he was kind of the director. And then Solomon Osmond came, and then Willie Perkin and Alex Sanders and all of those. There's always been, a, a, at least in, in the early years, a general backlash against lawyers for poor people or people who have no, no don't have a, a strong voice in the community. And there's, there's always a reason that the powers of be can find that these folks are too loud and boisterous. They're not handling this in the right way. Um, there's, you know, if if uh, if Alvin Chambliss just wasn't so loud, everything would be all right. But the problem was that unless somebody did speak up and have be a voice for those people who had did not have a significant amount of power, then there would never be any change to uh, protect their rights. And so there was a need for people to stand up and, and represent these folks. The kind of tenacity and the kind of um, uh, practice that the legal services brought about, they, got, they made the good old boys get off the seats. They, they, used to want have, they were making deals. They didn't really practice law the way they do now. But when those young guys came out and did what they did, that changed everybody. I think that they felt, that when I say they, I mean the, the community, I think felt that we were a resource and that we could be trusted and that if they had a problem and they came to us, I mean, everything was not about filing a lawsuit. It wasn't. Sometimes it was a, 
it was a brief service, sometimes it was a phone call, but they felt that we were someone that they could come to, that they could trust, and that if it were possible, we were going to get the, the job done for them. Well, the legal, uh, Rural Legal Service did a great service to the community, and then so actually a lot of people had not been able to afford most lawyers didn't want to take cases like, you know, and people didn't have any money, you know, they weren't going to work with. And so I don't care whether it was divorce, whether it was foreclosures, uh, whether it was uh, garnishments, all this kind of stuff. And Skip knew a lot of people because he did a lot of billing. He knew people knew him all over the place. And so they went to Skip before they went to the, <laughs> to the legal service. And so Skip would send them on, go up and talk to Luke. Oh, go back and uh, they can help you out. And so I think uh, Skip directed a lot of people to Rural Legal Service, say, you can get some help. Just go in and tell them I told you. One day, uh, it was a lady stayed three houses from me, and she had come to my mom's house. I didn't know anything about anything, and she said, it was a lady by the name of Rose Round come and said that it was um, a legal services or something trying to set up here, and they wanted people that knew the community well. And my mom told her that I did. So Rose Round, which was the first secretary that we had in Lafayette County, she uh, got, my, got my number, she called me, and she wanted me to come, and I met with Michael Twister. Uh, who else was it? Lucy McDougall, Erwin Connor. It was three or four of them, and they told me they got information from me, asked me would I want to work in the community? Did I have a car? And I told them yes. And um, they asked me did I know the community well? And I told them I did. Uh, a lot of folks would have suffered and rights have been trampled, trampled over and uh, they wouldn't have had any redress. I think we'd have looked like third world, world countries and uh, uh, rights have been uh, taken over, key has been locked up, uh, uh, discriminated against and we probably would not make that much, would not have made as much as progress as we have to this day. And I will say that that was good leadership from uh, Wilhelm Joseph. The lessons learned in Mississippi are still valuable. Uh, the lessons learned in Mississippi um, are being enhanced by lessons I've learned from my travels around the world. And one of the things I, I find a big challenge. People, men, wherever we are, <laughs> there are those of us who find ourselves in the power structure. And we can always find a way, a means to exploit others, control others, suppress others. I remember one time talking to a lawyer somewhere on the street and was making fun, trying to make fun of legal services work in the heirs case, the college desegregation case. And I just looked at him, I said, well, they, they won the, court, the case in the United States Supreme Court. So I don't think there's a whole lot else to say about it. To me, <laughs> they're all important, okay? They're important to that person. Uh, and uh, what you're doing, this, this is that person's case, so the importance of it to them is what matters. Uh, I, I give you, for instance, now, for, for instance, we may think uh, guardianship is just a simple little guardianship. But uh, there was an instance where I did a guardianship for a grandmother, uh, and on the surface, you know, but this was a grandmother this was a woman whose daughter died in the hospital, had a baby. The hospital wouldn't give her the baby, okay? Because the, so for somebody else, that may look like, oh, that's a little guardianship. No, that was more important. It was important that this family bring this child back to the family so it could be around its blood. And now getting uh, funds, especially grants, to allow us to represent people 
uh, uh, domestic violence victims, victims of sexual assault, you know, those types of things. Uh, we have some, uh, uh, some grants through the Internal Revenue Service that allows us to represent low-income taxpayers. We have grants that allow us to represent people who's home, who are about to lose their homes through foreclosure. So we have a foreclosure prevention uh, grant or project. We have an elder law project in which uh, we represent, specifically represent people who are 60 and over, and we get funding to allow us to do that so we can specifically represent those people and provide uh, services that the elderly, particular needs of, of the elderly. So that's in addition to, that allows us to handle cases that we otherwise would not be able to handle on our regular Legal Services Corporation funding. Black attorneys got started in legal services and eventually they wound up becoming judges and legislators and all this, but they got their start in legal services. I've always said that whoever and whatever I am today, it was all made in Mississippi and particularly in Oxford when I first started. I fully appreciate to this very day that I made the decision to come and work and to stay with North Mississippi Rural Legal Services. I simply do not believe that I would be, I would have the same understanding or the same appreciation of the law that I do now if I had not gone through that.